All right, uh, here we are. We are finished up with week three of the NCPBL Battle League. Um, I'm going to start breaking it down here. Uh, first game of the, the week was Tyler versus Joe. Um, let me pull up the team pace so I got a good idea of what I'm looking at here. Um, so I helped Tyler and Joe kind of like prep for this. Um, Joe brought like one of his like perfect matchups against Tyler. Like there's not a whole lot I would have changed with this. Um, the only thing, maybe not Delmize and bring Torkoal for a little more boosted Moltres and a better answer to uh, Kartana, but like, I mean, that's like such a, a tiny little change and Delmize matches up pretty well. So just going to go through this. Um, yeah, this was a really solid game. Uh, I think my only takeaway from this really was if Joe was to use Finney a little bit more as a defensive pivot. I know he was running a little more of an offensive set on it, but it was still always going to be able to check uh, Gudra, Keldeo, and Kartana. Um, so, like, overall, I I think both of them played really good. Um, there is <laughs> there's one turn in here that Joe just didn't understand some of the mechanics of one of the moves Tyler was using, and that kind of cost him. But, like, other than that... Um, you know, he played really, really well up to that point, and then even then after it, he brought it back a little bit after putting himself pretty far behind. Um, so, that was pretty good. This was a great switch to Mamoswine. Um, I was talking to Tyler before the game and uh, saying that, like, Rillaboom is probably going to be a good answer to Garchomp as a switch in. So, he's running Poison Jab, trying to catch the Rillaboom off the switch. Um, so, Mamoswine ended up working out great. Um... Yeah, I mean, not a not a ton that I would do differently up to this point. Um, just gonna kind of go through this taunt on Rillaboom, great call. Um, I think running, I don't know if he was running Swords Dance or not on it, but that, Swords Dance Grassy Glide would have went pretty crazy. Uh, Tyler was running a Grassy Seed Gudra to boost its defenses, which would have been a great answer to Rillaboom as well. Um, yeah, Gujra's, Gujra's really problematic for his team, but like I said, he had Finny. Right here, he uh, he messed up counting the grassy terrain turn, so when he switched in Rillaboom, he didn't even have the option to go for the, the grassy glide there. Um, and that poison jab, the crit actually did matter. He only had like a 40% chance to do that much. Uh, so like it's it still could have killed without the crit, but the crit guaranteed it then. Um, yeah, Dilma is obviously a great answer to Keldeo, especially with Synthesis. Um, so here, Joe <laughs> doesn't realize he's running Sap Sipper yet. Um, gets the, the spin off, and I think he power whips on this next turn. So, right here, after seeing that, okay, you go, all right, he has a physical Gudra. My Delmize just took 43%. It can live another Outrage, but he's locked into Outrage, so you always just have to go Finny here, especially since you don't have Rocks up that's going to do any damage. So he ends up sacking the... He got a low roll with Outrage originally. Oh, it was the boost from the Power Whip, so yeah, that was going to kill. But yeah, he could have just went into Finny, and then uh, Gudra would have been forced to switch out, and nothing on his team really wanted to eat a Moonblast after that, especially with how offensive his Finny was. Probably would have two hit uh, Skarmory. Kartana would have taken one and then revenge killed, but then you still have Delmize alive and you have Moltres as a good answer to it. Um, so here ends up just taking 55% unnecessarily on uh, Mamoswine. And then because of that, he ends up taking 16% unnecessarily on Finny. Um, so if those moves were a little more optimized, this game would have been extremely tough for Tyler. Um, got a nice little uh, special attack drop with the Moonblast there. Um, Joe told me after the game, he was like, I can't believe Coco stayed in on Tyranitar right here. <laughs> He's like, I was not ready for that. <laughs> he was thinking Skarmory was going to be the switch. So, yeah, that was a tough look there. Um, got to toss the that out. Now, Mamoswine with more health would have been important for Garchomp. Um, you know, anything 
uh, Keldeo would have done. So right here, you're switching to Finny on Keldeo every time. Like you're gonna get Misty Terrain up, so you can't get Scald Burnt, um, and then it can't do anything. So you can see how much a Moonblast does right here to Kartana. Yes, yeah, 73%. That's insane. Um, then right here, you got to go Moltres. Um, but he's a life orb, so it would have knocked him out with a, a knockoff anyway afterwards. So, uh, yeah, no, it was a really good game overall. Uh, if Joe just didn't make a couple moves in the mid 20s right there that were uh, not optimal, uh, he definitely could have taken it, uh, which is really cool. Um, Joe built a, a fantastic team and just made a couple misplays, and that was really all, all that it took. So, good game to both of them. That was really, really, really fun to watch. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, go on to the next one. Here we have Berg versus Tommy. So I helped Berg a little bit with his team this week. Um, I noticed he didn't have any, uh, stealth rocker. So he picked up Cabalion and dropped Gardevoir for that. And Cabalion works with his team so well, um, gives him a really nice defensive, uh, wall, um, like a choice scarfed waterfall only did 32% to it, which is crazy. Um, so this next move uh, Berg probably just wasn't aware of what Swampert could do. Um, I always recommend just hovering over the Pokemon so you can see it's typing, it's water ground. Um, and then like in prep, looking through like the Smogon analysis of what like some common things are that each Pokemon can run. So like Swampert obviously gets Earthquake. Um, he doesn't know it's Choice Scarfed at this point. Uh, so I would have just went into Corviknight 100% of the time here because Corviknight's not going to take like any damage from a Swampert. Um, now, if I went into Corviknight on the Volcarona, like that's bad, but then Victini and Rotom Heat are fantastic answers to it. Um, and yeah, so Berg just didn't really understand the, the typing of Volcarona here. So he goes for Iron Head, it's not very effective. So he's like, all right, I'm going to close combat it. But Bug resists fighting types, so close combat only did 24%. Um, yep, we got uh, Quiver Dance out. And here, you always have to go into Victini or Rotom Heat. It's the only two things that can possibly deal with it. Probably, ideally, Victini, because you don't have Stealth Rocks up that you have to switch into. I think he was running Boots anyway, so that didn't matter, but... Um, yeah, you just don't want it to get any more special attack boosts. Victini can live any hit from full health from it, and nothing on Tommy's team really wanted to eat a V-Create. Um, V-Create would have two-hit KO'd everything. So, unfortunately, he went into Corviknight here, and that was kind of where the game just went downhill. Um, but yeah, th that's just a little like battling inexperience. Um, like right here, you went for the body press. Like, you already knew it was resistant to fighting based off of the close combat being not very effective. Um, so, yeah, uh, Corviknight just wasn't going to do literally anything to it unless you Brave Birded. Um, so, and then you switched Victini into a Bug Buzz so it wouldn't be able to take two of them. If, if it came in at full health without taking an attack, it would have been fine. Um, but, yeah, from, from here, it's just like, you don't have enough answers. You got to go Decidueye on Aleki. Here you have to go Corviknight. Um, yeah, a boosted facade to an 87% to a defensive Rotom. That's just unreal. So yeah, um, knockoff just, I think, sweeps from here. Yep. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's just an experience right there. Um, otherwise, like Berg had a really solid team to deal with all this. Uh, just a couple not optimized moves, but not really a whole lot to talk about with that. Just got to get him a little more reps with understanding some of the, the typings and defensive pivots. All right, so my game. Uh, <laughs> I've been thinking about this one ever since we like stopped playing last night. Um, I got some really, really good prep in with Tommy this week, and I was ready for Matt. Like, uh, it wasn't. This wasn't the worst matchup I think I could have had. If he brought Weavile instead of Blaziken, and then he brought Ferrothorn instead of Klefki, I think I would have had a harder time. Um, but yeah, we'll just we'll play this out. So Matt, Matt, kudos to him. He played this like literally perfectly. Um, there may have been one move that like he could have played differently. But yeah, I I figured he was going to run Toxic on Melodic and everything else on my team. I needed to be healthy, like. Um, Mandibuzz was a better answer to Drapion 
um, than than Clefable was, and it was also a better answer to Blaziken than Clefable was. So I just needed it to not get toxic, and then Clefable was like my only other option here. Um, right here, I probably should have just went for the Horn Leech to give myself a little bit more health, but I didn't think he was going to stay in with Melodic right here. So like really good play on his part, just like letting it eat this. Um, my Woodhammer like got a pretty good roll. Um, you know, thankfully I didn't get burnt here. Um, so I, I could have done 94% with it. So like I actually could have killed, but I ended up only doing 91, um, which would have been like unreal if I just, if I, if I got the K there, I would have won, but it's all good. Um, yeah. So basically I just don't end up getting enough health back on, um, on Bulu for it to be able to check circuitry in the end game. So as we go through this, um, I'm preserving Bulu because I'm like, maybe I can get another grassy terrain turn up with it eventually. Clefable, it's toxic. It's pretty much useless here. Um, I mean, like, I guess I could have just Shadow Ball. Yeah, so I did. Um, really not anything. Clefable was done, pretty much done at this point. Um, yeah, so the, I'm just, I'm sacking it. Got to eat another life orb on that. Talonflame revenge kills. Um, so yeah, here I go for the SD, uh, predicting the the reflect. I wasn't expecting toxic on, Cle on Klefki, um, which you know, good play on his part. Didn't really matter though. Um, he's just gonna get his screens up. I'm gonna take it out, and. And let's see here. Okay, so Blaziken, I know he's going to go for the Protect here to get the speed boost. Um, but Mandiba is like, takes 45% from Lock Rock Slide. We're good. I get rid of his screens. He doesn't have Clef Key, so he can't get him back up. And I, and from here, like, Mandiba is obviously a great answer to uh, Drapion. So I'm just trying to like get my health back up on it. Um, avoid some flinches and whatever, so... I end up getting back up to full. Drapion can't do like literally anything to me, um, especially now that it's Sword Stance right there. Um, so I'm going to end up three hit KOing it with foul play. Uh, thankfully, don't get poisoned on on that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so I'm I'm pretty weak. Uh, and then I think he goes Blaziken and just revenge kills me. So right here, it's at fifty eight percent. There's a couple options. So I was going to go Volcanion, and I was like, all right, if I don't get flinched, I kill him. Um, what I probably should have done here is just go Nitto King and then let him uh, Flare Blitz into me on my switch to Volcanion. He takes another Life Orb. And then from there, I still have enough health where I can try to Earth Power. If he flinches me there, he goes down to 48%. He kills me on the next one. He's at 38%. And then... Um, actually, I think... Yeah, so 48... Uh, he would have been at 28% because it would have been 10 on the Nindo King on the Switch and then two more. So, um, so him being here and then... Okay, so I'd make this move. All right. I get flinched. I should not sack Volcanion here. I know the only thing he can kill me with from here is another Rock Slide. So what I need to do is go into Nidoking on the Rock Slide. Or even if he close combats, like Nidoking's going to have enough health. Um, so an adamant Blaziken versus my Nidoking. Uh, close combat would have done up to 53. Rock Slide would have done up to 22. Um, so say he Rock Slides again, I go Nidoking. He goes down another to 38. From there, he has to Flare Blitz to kill me. And then I just go back into Volcanion. I eat the Flare Blitz because it's not going to do anything to a Fire Water type. He's at 28, and then he kills me on the next one. He's at 18. And then from there, I can go into Talonflame, make him hit me again, drop him down to 8%, and then go into Bulu. He kills me, but then Blaziken dies, and I have a like a 78% health Nitto King. And 78% health. Nitto King does not die to anything, including crits from Zerkatry. But I get flinched here, and I just got tilted and didn't really think straight. Um, 
so yeah, I just I kind of threw right here. I I sacked Volcanion, and that was that was game. I didn't really have any other way to kill Blaziken, other than going Nidoking. Um, even here, uh, I know he has the Flare Blitz. It only has a thirty percent chance to kill me, and like I lived in like one health or three health or something. I should have just went Talon Flame here, make him keep eating Recoil and Life Orb Recoil, then go Bulu. He ends up dying to Recoil, and I still have a healthy Nidoking. So. I really did not play this to my win strategy at that point. Um, yeah, I lived on 1%. He dies. But then I don't have anything that can eat two hits from Zerkatry. Um, and like Talonflame, I just had to bank on him not having enough uh, EVs to outspeed Talonflame. Like maybe he just like jacked up his tr his scarf. He went modest or something. Um and like obviously he's getting the special attack boost so maybe he wouldn't be faster uh so yeah i just had to go for the swords dance hoping that he was specs or slower than me and so i went for the swords dance here because that would have killed um a talon flame at plus my talon flame at plus two onto uh choice scarf zirka tree did 103 percent minimum so i just had to hope i was faster i wasn't i go for the sd and then, like, you know, I, I can't even kill him because he's faster than me, so. And then Bulu at 32%, since I went for the Woodhammer, wouldn't live um, anything from him. So, yeah, GG's the mat. That was a really good game. Um, looking forward to maybe playing you in the playoffs. Uh, I, I know I got a good, a good strategy against you. You just have a really good team against me, so I just have to play it perfectly, and I did not that game, so. GG's a little frustrating on the on the flinch, but you know, it's Pokemon. What are you gonna do? Right? Um, let's see here. Where'd my music go? Alright, so next game. Uh Dodge versus E. Okay, so I know how E kind of preps. He looks at everything that Dodge is weak to, and then he looks at everything he's weak to, and like what Dodge could possibly bring against that. Um and then he builds his team offensively to hit whatever Dodge has. Uh, this was just like an unfortunate lack of team prep for Aerodactyl. Um, if Aerodactyl hits his Stone Edge on Gyarados, hits its Stone Edge on Zapdos, and hits the Stone Edge on Espeon, it just 6 0s. So, uh, right here, like, you know, you're not, you're not a Focus Sash on Excadrill, so you just got to get out of there. There's. I mean, his team is a little weak to Stealth Rock, so it would be nice to have him up. But I think you just have to go Zapdos immediately right here. Um, but yeah, you just, it was just like Aerodactyl had the best matchup in the world against E's team. Um, Life Orb, that is. So like... And <laughs> the Zapdos... Um, let me run the cap calc on this while this is playing. Uh, Zapdos that E was running versus a Life Orb Arrow... Stone Edge had a 70% chance to Oko, so like, he got an extremely low roll with that 92% against Zapdos, and um, yeah, so, just a tough look. Um, but he did a really good job of climbing back out of this. Unfortunately, his Espeon was three attacks with Trick. Um, if he was running Hyper Voice, uh, let's see how much that would have done to uh, that Venusaur. Um, Espeon, Choice Specs... Uh, da, da, da. Bear with me. With Hyper Voice. Venusaur. Yeah, Hyper Voice would have at least three hit KO it, and that was what he was really needing because he was faster. Um, so yeah, once once uh, Chandelure goes down and he gets this good chunk on Pangoro, Hyper Voice would have actually just won. Um, but yeah, he just didn't have it on his team, and so he did a really good job clawing, clawing it back, getting a couple kills. Dazzling Gleam was the only thing he had that would have killed Pangoro. Um, Dodge actually kind of threw going for Bullet Punch right there. Um, he probably should have known that nothing could have killed him, and just went for the knockoff uh, on Espeon and just killed it right there. But since he went for Bullet Punch, um, Espeon actually could have went for Shadow Ball, and then killed it in two, and then would have been able to deal with a uh, Venusaur from there. So, um, yeah, no, it was just a really good game. 
on on both ends. Uh, Dodge came super pre prepared with that Aerodactyl, um, and yeah, ease deficiency of having a defensive answer for it really hurt in the end game. Um, but anyway, that was that was the the recap for the week. Um, everybody played really well. Uh, seen a lot of growth um, overall from everybody, uh, which is awesome. Like you know, we're three weeks in. It feels like everybody's got a good grasp. Um, like Berg just needs to work on like battle strats and everything, but like he's bringing really, really good teams. So, um, you know, I, I can't say anything bad about that for sure. So yeah, that, that's the wrap up for this week. Uh, let's see, we got, let me, uh, let me pull up the tier and the schedule real quick. Um, next week we have Pano versus Tyler, Joe versus MJC, Tommy versus Dodge, and then E versus Berg. So, yeah, another awesome lineup next week of games. Look, really looking forward to it. Um, I got to go fix my battling issues uh, versus Tyler. Uh, and, yeah, I'll see you guys in the Discord. So, till next week, boys. Peace.